Hi folks and welcome back to the Advantage Applications channel. Today I wanted to make a video to show you one method for getting the identity of a newly inserted record into a SharePoint list that's linked to an Access database. And we're going to do that using Access's native programming language VBA or Visual Basic for Applications. And as always, the files and source code that I use in these videos is available to channel members. So if you'd like to become a member of the channel and help us make this content for less than the cost of a coffee, uh, check out the link in the description. Okay, let's take a look. To demonstrate this, I've set up a database for tracking events that may occur at a worksite. The idea is that an employee can open an unbound form, populate some controls with event information, Then click Submit, and that information is written to two different tables. One table, TBL Event Details, stores the information on the left of the form. Event Date, who's reporting the event, which is auto-populated with the user's login. The Event Location, which is a combo box populated by TBL Location. And Event Description. The other table, TBL Triggering Event Type, stores what type of event occurred which is selected from this list box on the right, which is populated by data stored in TBL event type. And users can select multiple event types per submission. So the relationship between TBL event details and TBL triggering event type is a one-to-many relationship, meaning for every one record in TBL event details, there can be one or more related records in TBL triggering event type. To make this work, I'll insert a record into TBL event details using SQL and VBA get the ID of that newly inserted record, then insert a record or records into TBL triggering event type matching that new ID with the IDs of selected event types. This will all make more sense when we walk through it in a bit. But what we'll end up with in TBL triggering event type is just a pairing of event IDs with the event type IDs that were selected for that event. So how do we get the ID of a newly inserted record when the table is linked to a SharePoint list? Well, there isn't an automatic way to do it from Access, so what I like to do is create a field called Earmark, and you can, of course, name that field whatever you like. I'll make it a standard text field, and I won't assign a default value. Okay, I save it. Then I'm going to delete and relink this table. I confirm that my new field exists. And now I'm ready to write my code. So I already have some code in the click event of the uh, submit button. And if you aren't familiar with executing SQL from VBA, I have a video on that. You can watch it by tapping the link in the upper right of your screen. And there will also be a link in the description. So the first thing I want to do is create a variable that's going to hold the value for the earmark that we just put the new field for in uh, the SharePoint list. So I'm just going to call that earmark value and I'm going to make it a string. Now the next thing we want to do of course is assign a value to that variable. And what I want to do is get a unique enough value that I can use it to look up the real ID of the newly inserted record. So what I do for that is use the currently logged in users ID and also the current date and time. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in the immediate window real quick. And what that does is really reduce the risk in a multi-user environment that any two people would ever get the same identity on a record. Even the same person submitting back-to-back -back entries uh, would not get the same earmark value here. So now that we've got our earmark value, I need to add that field to my SQL string here, the list of fields that I'm going to be writing to. And I need to modify the code down here where I assign values to those fields. And since it's a string, I will need to enclose it in single quotes. And since it's the last field in my value list here, I don't need to put a comma there, but I will need to come up to the line above it and add a comma to that line. 
Okay, I'm going to execute this code, but I'm going to put a stop in it first so that we can make sure it's right. I'll just populate these fields. I'm going to keep the time date stamp there and my user ID. We'll say the event location would be the loading dock and we'll say we just observed some horseplay. We'll put that down as risky behavior and click submit. Now if I look at my SQL string, I see that it is going to execute an insert statement and here's my field list. And here are the associated values. So everything looks good. Let's go ahead and play it through. And then we'll go check our table. And there's our record with our earmark value. So now the next step, once I have that earmark value, is to use it to look up the identity of the newly inserted record here in Event Details and insert a new record in TBL triggering event type, plug in that event details ID, and then also the ID or IDs of any event types that are selected here. So to do that, I'm going to create a new variable to hold the actual ID of that new record. And I'll make it a long integer. And I'll use a DLOOKUP to get that value. Okay, and once that plays through, we'll have that new record ID in this variable here, so we can use that to start our new insert statement to get our information into TBL triggering event type. So to do that, I've written a subroutine here called create selected item rex. It's going to take in the event details ID as a parameter. And then just for each selected item in that list box, it's going to run a SQL statement to insert a record into TBL triggering event type. So just to take a glance at the code here, I've got a variable for each selected item in the list box. I've got a string SQL variable here. I turn the warnings off at the beginning of the for loop so that it doesn't prompt the user each time it's going to insert a record. And I turn those warnings back on after that loop. The insert statement's pretty simple. It's just inserting values into the event details ID field and the event type ID field and it plugs those values in here. Of course, this value is passed in, as we said. And it's just going to take the current selected item in the list box and insert the value for that. Okay, so let's go back up here and actually make a call to that subroutine now. We're going to pass in the new rec ID variable. Okay, now we should be able to run the code and test that. So again, I'll just go ahead and accept whatever the default values are here in these pre-populated controls. I could change those if I wanted to. And this time I'll choose Office, and I'll just put Test in the comment, and we'll choose Incorrect Procedure and Supply Issue this time. Click Submit, the code runs, the controls reset. If I go into TBL Event Details, I see my new inserted record there with Test as the comment. And if I go into TBL triggering event type, I see that it inserted two records, one for each selected event type. This is my event details ID, and that's correct, that's nine. And we selected event types three and four. So if I go to TBL event type, three and four is indeed incorrect procedure and supply issue, which is what we selected. So I know there was a lot of detail in that explanation. I just really wanted to give you guys a scenario where you could see where this might be something that you would use. The idea is whenever you want to capture the idea of a newly inserted record into a SharePoint list, there isn't an automatic way to do that. So you'll have to come up with some way to get that ID by looking it up. And the way that I do it is by creating that earmark value field and then getting a relatively unique value, plugging it into that field, and then using a DLOOKUP to get the ID.
So anyway, I hope that's helpful to you if you come up against that circumstance. Thanks for watching and take care.